Dell Inspiron 16 Plus is one of the best laptops available in the market for its price point. Only machine more beautiful, in my opinion, is Apple MacBook Pro, but that's almost three times the price, and that's a totally different path because of the M1 chip. If you compare it to other manufacturers, you will end up paying 40 to 100% more price for a similar machine. And they're still not as good looking as this. You're not only getting top of the line specs like Thunderbolt 4, 16 inch IPS display, but which is high resolution 3K screen, and enough ports to satisfy virtually everyone. And that's just not me who's saying that. If you look at YouTube reviews, all of them are raving about it. But I will irrevocably say that you should not buy this machine. It has an Archilis heel. The mouse trackpad has a design flaw that Dell does not admit. It is not 100% reliable. It stops working, jumps around like it does not care. And if you're planning to use this machine as laptop, this will not work for you. You can check Reddit, Dell Forms, and other sources to see this is an ongoing issue. I've been through two of these machines myself, and both of, the, both of them had this issue every time. Now, there are a lot of theories out there why is that, but only fix there is to open it up and do this procedure that I'm about to show you, this just may make it usable. So try it at your own risk. This does not void warranty, but I do not take any responsibility. So here guys, I have the new Dell Inspiron 16 already dismantled. And I uh, put up instructions, how am I going to fix it and um, you know, I'll, I'll put in more details how to put it together, how to take it off, and what to do and what not to do. Uh, so currently, I don't have the thick foil paper. So what I did was I took uh, tons of thin wall, uh, thin one I did had, and I have this, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I folded it up a couple of times. I didn't thought it wasn't enough. So I put in some uh, in between here as well it kind of comes out you can see or not but you know I just fold it and just put some in there just to make it thickness so it'll probably if you have the thick one it's probably like you know double or maybe three four times the thickness uh, certainly this can be thicker um, I was using this really thin foil this is just a covering that goes on the bottom of in the kitchen on different things it's very thin very flexible very easy and it has these grooves so you know even most of the time the thickness is even less uh, so this kind of worked but I would um, so without it I would have a problem with the tarp cut every single time so with this and this covering that I would have problem maybe every second or third time and even with that um generally turning a, you know the lid off and on once or twice will generally get it fixable i generally do use it um on the desktop more so i have my docking station connected so i don't it's not that big of a deal for me um so now i actually cut this from the actual bottle uh, it's not completely straight i wish i would have used scissors i used the cutter and um it's not a thing I, I rounded the corners you don't have to now there's one thing you have to notice so you on the bottom over here um this can actually go in underneath so there's actually space underneath here and it actually can go underneath and there's this little ridge here in the center over here you're going to have to push it in a little bit and it can go in here like that so the other tutorials i saw people actually put it in here like that i'm not going to do that <clears throat> i'm actually going to try putting it in here like that because this little space here is needed to click so if you actually slide it in especially with the foil paper <coughs> it actually um, basically uh, causes uh, you can't click the mouse pad then and that is annoying so let me just hook it up and I'll back so here's my update one minute later uh so basically i actually slide this in inside 
and I opened it up just a little bit just to see so I can still click but the actual main part of it uh, the bigger thicker plastic and the foil paper it's not um, uh, going underneath uh, this part so it will not be um, hindering the clickability of that um, there's one part here it's pressing this wire because the battery is going to come on top I preferably like to cut this a little bit but for now I'm not going to do that um, so <clears throat> the next step is to take the battery and it just goes on top so you align the uh, things on it and there's only one wire that goes in here and I'm going to screw it in and I'll be right back so here we go we have uh, screwed it in so there's two bottoms screws and there's three top one um, you generally want to have uh, uh, some sort of <clears throat> Uh, you generally want to have some sort of a magnetic screwdriver because they're extremely tiny and when they fall they, you can't put your fingers in it's really hard to get out um, there is actually a way to you sh you're supposed to put it in service mode where service or sorry the serv battery isn't disengaged it's in the service mode uh, so you can short circuit if you throw the uh, screw in some weird place and uh, you know you don't want to cause short circuit so this particular screw on the top left you have to open and close a couple of times so it um, goes in straight flush otherwise this seems to go in uh, slightly an angle it will still work but you know um, generally you want it flush uh, so let's see and you can see um, I have my stuff poking underneath so here's my cover so you want to snap it in in place first press it in and then put all the screws in just want to let you know for the 16 one you do not need to take out this center screw on top uh, but you do have this little net um, this little let me just show you so you have this little uh, uh, ledge kind of thing on the side so if you force it in the wrong way uh, that's gonna break not a big deal but you know you don't want to break anything more than you have to so this part you need to take it straight out and these two top screws which go on you know where the hinges are so this and this one these don't come out and you may probably want to open and close them way more than you know rest of the screws so you have to uh, turn a little bit more so when you think you have opened it just turn it a couple more turns just to make sure you do have it loose because they're slightly longer and again you don't have to take that out um, but you want to put it everything straight in don't want to uh, push too hard anything if something's wrong um, then just you know take your time figure out some wires on the way or you miss something or something's poking out so I'm gonna just do that so just go slowly around and you know wherever you can just put it in its place so I'll be right back so as I mentioned these screws don't come out so you have to screw it in and this actually will make this area pop in you have to press a little bit and tighten a little bit more but they don't come out and this is where you generally want to start um, and flipping that you may use a guitar pick or something soft uh, that softer than plastic so uh, I didn't have anything last time I did it so I end up using um, CD um, that's still plastic uh, not the preferred choice but you know it's better than others so okay now just a matter of putting a couple of screws in so here we go so now it's all plugged in and should be ready to go yay so mouse is working so now every time a uh, Dell technician will come and replace it and do repairs it will always 100% work why because every time you restart the computer it always works at start no question asked